y'all, welcome to another Shadowlands Dungeon Guide. This one's going to be focusing on the dungeon Plaguefall. Luckily there is a summoning stone directly out front, and as always this is going to be in chronological order, that way you can pause and play my video as you're doing the dungeon yourself. Now the first couple mobs that you're going to run into are going to be the giant golem who's just going to throw out these little swirlies that leave poison patches on the ground. Make sure you're moving out of these as quick as possible to avoid any damage from it. As well as those, you're going to have the different fun guys. The stormers are going to do an AoE fungi storm that's going to do a lot of damage to your group, so be ready for AoE healing while you're doing this. The other ones are going to drop little fungi on the ground. You're going to want to make sure you're moving them out of that because they will root players in place. After that, you're going to run into these big plague belchers. All these oozes regenerate their health, so try and CC them or just kill them before they get to them. Also, the Plague Belchers will be using a frontal cone. Make sure you're not standing in front of them because it will do a significant amount of damage. Then you're going to move straight on to the first boss, Glob Grog. He's going to go ahead and do a Plague Stomp that knocks everybody back as well as slows them. What you want to do is right after that when he does his frontal cone, make sure you're positioned so that this slow isn't detrimental to you and you're not eating this mechanic. Eventually he's going to go ahead and start spawning oozes. The big ones can be CC'd with Banish, Roots, Binding Shot, pretty much anything. Make sure they don't touch the boss and be ready to start killing all the small adds as they're running over to the boss. It's going to be a nice and simple fight for you so just get those right out of the way. The next mob I wanted to include are the Blighted Spinebreakers. Make sure you're not standing in that frontal cone because it really hurts as you can see the tank eating it. As you kill this mob, he's going to spawn little oozes that metamorph, so make sure you're killing these before you go on to the next pack or else you're going to be overwhelmed. I highly recommend going around the outside of this room, but if you go through here and you have this tentacle grab you while you're having the bombs explode, just be ready to die because you can't get out of there. As you make it to the next boss, you're going to have to clear the room while he's jumping from platform to platform, so just pay attention to where he is and be sure you're not pulling those as he's getting there. As you can see in the video, we go ahead and clear these out as he's jumping around and as we kill this last pack right here, we go ahead and initiate the boss fight. So then you're going to go ahead and start fighting Dr. Akis. The first mechanic to watch out for is slime injection on the tank. If you're the healer, just make sure you're dispelling that. Anyone can walk over the slime to kill it before it erupts, so make sure that gets done. Eventually you're going to see him hop to another platform where he throws a bomb out. That is your number one priority. If it goes off, you're all going to wipe. At the same time, Dr. Ickes is going to start targeting players and leaping towards them to do damage with a four-way split. So make sure that you're not standing in those pathways. At the same time, a congealed slime is going to pop up, which is going to be the purple slime. It reduces damage by 75% for any allies around it. So if it's around the bomb, kill it first. If it's next to the boss, make sure you're killing it as soon as possible. You're going to want to make this fight as easy as possible to avoid having to do it over and over again when it's not that complicated. Now the third boss you're going to run into is Domina Venomblade. Make sure that when she's using Shadow Ambush on a player, you're not standing inside of that circle because it will hurt and it will stun you for 3 seconds. Throughout the encounter, she's going to spawn these little webs on the ground. Make sure you reveal the mobs inside of there as quick as possible. You can use flares, AoE, just run up to them, anything to knock them out. If you ignore these mobs, they do a stacking dot on you. They will wipe you guys really quickly when that healer can't keep up with it. So make sure to reveal those mobs. As you're clearing out the last boss room, there's going to be a ton of packs right here that have very slow moving mobs in them. You're going to want to make sure that you're kiting these as much as possible. They do a ton of damage to you, so you want to avoid being in melee range at all costs. If you're the tank, do the minimum requirements to keep that threat. Just make sure you're not in there getting hit. Then we have the final boss. The tank is going to want to get these melee adds and stand in the circle. Use defenses if you have them up to try and avoid extra damage. Throughout the encounter, she's going to spawn these tentacles. You can tell exactly where they're going and which ones are going to hit next. Pay attention to when they turn yellow and just move around to avoid getting hit by them. The little adds aren't that big of a deal, but make sure you're killing them. It's mostly the big melee ad that you want to make sure you're killing right away and that the tank is standing in that circle. It will wipe your group if he's not. 
It is probably the most fun fight in Shadowlands in my opinion so far. I absolutely love it. I feel bad for anyone who has to stand still and cast, but as a Reso Druid, it's right in my element. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and leave your comments below.